Welcome into Rover Sports, guys. What's going on? Uh, this is a, this is the Jared Goff film review special here as he plays the New England Patriots. This was not the most enjoyable watch in the world, but this is an, this, we're going to try to make it educational here. We ain't PBS, but we're going to try to make this thing educational. Uh, per usual, we got a lot of L.A. Rams fans, up-and-coming franchise for certain. I love Sean McVay. I love the passion that the guy brings to the game. He runs a very organized ship. He's a Gruden disciple. Um, Jay Gruden, that is. And uh, he was also with John. And, uh, you know, Jared... Uh, he didn't play well last year. He actually played awful. But you look at the wide receivers. The receivers happen to be pre the receivers happen to suck on this team. I mean, uh, Kenny Britt. Um, you know uh, what's his name? J uh, you know James Quick. Whatever Brian Quick. Whatever the guy's name is. Lance Kendricks. Offensive line sucks. So Todd Gurley. Uh, everybody's unmotivated on this football team. So for Jared Goff, um, pretty much. He has, uh, he has a ton of work to do, a lot of work to prove, and the Rams shouldn't sit back on their hands if this guy's not going to be a capable starter. Here you see Jared, you know, uh, tries to, he tries to fit it in. Pretty decent throw, um, and, and, but, but, but here's a footwork issue. You know, Jared got third and 11. He's, always, he's playing on his heels, uh, playing scared, deer in the headlights type of footwork. And then he tries to he decides to get out of the pocket and he just has to chalk it up to a you know to a, a punt a three and out. Um, da, da, da. I believe here's a punt and now the Rams get the football back. All right, so here we go. And, and something when I watched when I watch Carson Wentz, when I watch Jameis, when I watch Andrew Luck, um, guys that were selected in the top five, they have they have the NFL arm that just blows you off the page. You know, they have the talent and it's just in terms of them getting coached up and it's in terms of the footwork, it's in terms of film preparation. When I watch Jared Goff sometimes, I mean this guy just doesn't have great command of the football. His arm strength, I don't believe he has an un, I don't believe he has unbelievable arm strength. I mean I've rarely seen Jared air out the football. Um, in this game he's mostly very limited to eight yard throws. And being a first rounder, being the number one pick overall, I just don't know if this guy has the arm strength. I don't know if this guy has the arm strength that would lead you to believe that he's a franchise quarterback in the NFL. And we, we heard Jared last year. In this game, he throws a lot of wobblers, a lot of wounded ducks. And, and you know, a lot of people, like, they, you know, they... Um, they kind of scoffed at the question when it was asked at the Combine about Jared Goff's hand size being like only 9 inches last year. But when you play on the road, when you play in November in Foxborough, you have to wear gloves. I mean, Jared Goff just didn't seem to even have control of the football, even have a great grip on the ball when I watched Jared Goff. His footwork is not elite. Um, here you're going to see a first down. Um, and this is a footwork issue. Believe it or not, he puts enough on this ball, even though his throwing motion, I, I want to tighten it up a little bit. And uh, this is pretty much the most telling play of Jared's day because this is actually one of the only opportunities that Matt Patricia, you know, you know, even gave him. Here you see Jared. If he were to step up right here, he's going to complete this ball. Instead, he, he waits, and, and, he, and, and his whole body is moving backwards. He's fading into this throw, and that's why this throw is behind. Because he's not getting any leverage from his lower body on that particular throw. We can watch it in real time again. Play action. Step into the throw. Get right and put some oomph on this ball. He doesn't. His whole body's fading back. That's why he misses that particular throw. And then I'm not going to analyze this that much. But Jared Goff basically throws a pretty good ball. And it goes off of Lance Kendrick's hands. This INT isn't Jared's fault. But this was a game where Tom dominated the time of possession. You know, the team went to, um, you know, the team again is with Jeff Fisher. They're wheeling, they're reeling, excuse me. And uh, it's just a dumpster fire there. Greg Williams' defense is just completely exhausted. He probably ran them out in the offseason because in the first four games, the Rams' defense was fucking awesome. I mean, if you remember, they beat Seattle 9-6. to Then they went to Arizona and their defense just played with such a nasty attitude. Their defense was phenomenal. But then, you know, Matt Ryan lit them up for 56 points. Drew Brees absolutely just molly-whopped them. This team at this point 
was complete and utterly one of the most dysfunctional teams in the league last year coming down the stretch. And Jeff Fisher had no direction. And Jared Goff pretty much had no itinerary. Um, here, Jared is slow to process a blitz. And that's something when I look at Jared, too. He's he, In this game, especially versus New England, uh, you might say I'm critiquing Jared, but the team literally couldn't even get a first down when you watch this game. Jared doesn't process the blitz coming from the other side. He's half field reading, and Logan Ryan's gonna get gonna go ahead and get Jared back there for about a 15 yard loss behind in the chains. Another punt, more apathetic drives of three and out bullshit. And yeah, the offensive line sucks. The coaching sucks. The receivers suck. So the good news is with Cooper Cup, Pharaoh Cooper. Um, they drafted Everett out of South Alabama, a tight end with a lot of potential, and you got Sean McVay, we're going to learn a hell of a lot about Jared. But just watching this film, just watching the tape, th there's real concerns about the talent and potential of Jared Goff. You know, a lot of times in the NFL you say, you know, this guy has all the, the talent in the world and he just needs to put it together. Does Jared Goff even have the talent? You know, when, when you looked at guys like Jamarcus Russell, yeah, he's the ultimate example of he could throw 60 yards off his knees. He had the talent, but he just couldn't process. He couldn't study on a week-to-week -week basis. You know, Ryan Mallett's another example. Huge arm, just again, doesn't have the mental makeup to be a lead at this level. But when you look at Jared Goff, does Jared Goff have the capacity to be, you know, a guy that, that can lead a team. I'm trying to think of other guys with, poten with potential that, um, that didn't really pan out, like, like the guys that actually had talent that didn't pan out, um, like maybe Tavares Jackson. I'm not going to say E.J. Manuel. E.J. Manuel didn't have the potential. But Christian Hackenberg, you know, has an arm. But does he have the mental makeup? Does he have the footwork to really be a lead? Um... And we're scrolling through a lot because, again, the Rams didn't get a lot of possessions in this game. It was mostly, you know, three and outs and so on and so forth. So we don't have a ton to look at with JG in this game. Here we're going to see Jared make a good throw. And we're going to show Jared Goff going against the Saints defense a really struggle. And, um... He, he played well in the Saints game. So we're going to do the Saints game next, guys. Um, so, so you're kind of going to get a feel. But Jared Goff, I mean, for most of the year, this team was just absolutely awful with him leading the team. The Seattle game sucked. The Falcons game sucked. The Dolphins game sucked. He only had about one good game. There you see Jared get outside of the pocket. He's able to hit, um, he's able to hit I believe, Quick, who, who happens to make a very nice play on this football. Jared, decent mobility. Happens to actually make a pretty good throw. So, we'll give him some credit there. A little bit of a wobbler, but again. You know. Let's keep scrolling through here, guys. On Rover Sports, the show. They get a field goal. And uh, here we go. Second and ten for JG. Get underneath, same sort of shit, you know. Kind of get the point, kind of get the memo. Yeah, it was tough to watch this game, no doubt. If this was the only football game that was on, I don't know if I'd watch football, no doubt. Here comes JG, third and 13. Again, he, he stares down guys. I mean, I mean that's something that, you know, when you look at the third and longs, you know. This is Jared, and not only is his footwork troublesome, he's also staring down guys. He's staring down guys, not coached up at all, and uh, it's worrisome. I'll put it that way, guys. It's worrisome. Torture session is over, and there you see a wobbler with the gloves again. You see the football turning end over end like a little, like a Johnny Heckler punt, and uh, yeah, yeah. Alrighty, and listen, it's tough. It's tough. This guy drafted number one overall. Uh, it's, I'll put it this way, man. It's, uh, 
He was tough sledding for Jared last year, and he's going he's gonna to have to ball out this year. That's for sure. All right, guys, more JG film reviews, though, coming up, and uh, more film reviews in general. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching.